Hello everyone, it's Becky here. So today in this video, I want to talk about um, a very common question that I was asked by a lot of people. The question is, how do you improve and how can you draw and paint so well? So for me, I think like a background education in technical drawing and painting is very important because once you have like a um, background knowledge on how to see, how to observe the different things in life, such as um, like a cup or a fruit or different still life objects in everyday life, and then moving on to landscapes and more complex subject matters, you, you, it's very important that you have a quite solid background knowledge or like a, um, it doesn't have to be like very advanced training. I think you need a, a basic to an intermediate training in drawing and painting. I think it's really, really important for you to know which direction you're going, to know uh, which part that you're lacking and how you can improve. So you need a background education in drawing and painting if you want to uh, really want to improve instead of self-taught. Um, some people, they, they self-taught, yeah, sure, you can do that, but if you want to improve um, in drawing realistically, then I think it's very important to have um, some serious education. So for me, I started my first academic drawing lessons when I was about nine years old and when I was in China. So I was born in China and since I was very little, since I was about, yeah, just like almost any kid, five, four years old, five years old, I was really interested. I loved drawing and I was even more um, passionate about drawing cartoons, drawing stories, comic books when I was in elementary school. And then in grade four, my mom was like seeing my interest and skills in drawing. So she asked me, do you want to learn something, you know, more serious about drawing? I can send you to a drawing class, like academic drawings, um, really serious trainings in uh, drawing with pencils. It's kind of like the old fashioned way or the old um, academy way of drawing. So drawing different shapes like cylinders, spheres, cones, and you do the outlines first with pencil and then you see the light and shade and the shadows and you do that with different grades of pencils. And then, so I learned, so I took classes in that since I was nine years old. I took for about one year and then and then we moved to a new area in the city and then so I didn't continue until after about one or two years later. Um, so I spent another uh, year in grade six going back to acad academic pencil drawings again. So I, in my childhood, I spent about two years studying that. And then when I was in grade eight, we immigrated to Canada. So I didn't really continue, but I continued to take art classes in high school. And as we know, the art classes in high school in North America is not very uh, formal training in technical skills. Um, so basically the teacher just gave you a topic or they just um, give you like a famous artist as an inspiration. They might train you in, I think I had really good art teachers because they they, uh, they give us assignments on how to uh, create tones and values, uh, how to mix colors, make color wheels. So that those are really good practices for, uh, those are really good fundamental skills for doing better drawings and paintings. And then when I was in, in grade 11, I decided to apply for art school. So I, so, so my mom helped me to find another teacher like after school so I went there like every week once a week after school to take some more serious art lessons from a master of arts professor and here I'm gonna show you like my portfolio from high school so these are some of my 
old academic drawing and painting works from about 10 to 12 years ago when I was in high school, when I was learning after school from a, uh, a master of art professor in my community. So I'm gonna show you the works I did when I was in high school, some serious training. So this one, I think I did this when I was in about grade 11. This one was for my um, university entrance portfolio. And I did this with my art professor after school. And so basically I have to study the forms and the transparency of these glass vessels. And I had to add some imaginary elements like a background. Oh, that was pretty cool. And then again, this one, what I mean by academic drawing is the study of um, different geometric shapes, learn the, uh, the three dimensional forms and study the light and shadows. And this one was a bit more challenging. This one, so these are all casts. So these are all um, chalk casts, very fragile. And this one is more challenging because it's the uh, it's the year. And this one is an oil pastel work of a study of a set of still life, the lantern and gloves and popsicle bottle gloves. And here, this one was done with oil pastel. And this one is watercolors that I did when I was in grade 11 or 12. Um, again, still life in a home, a glass like a coffee maker and slipper and a stuffy toy and a light bulb on a colorful tablecloth. This one is watercolor steady. Um, back then, it actually took me like several classes, which is about three hours or more to finish one painting like this. So it's actually a lot of rendering, a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of attention to details. And again, this one is a more earlier one. I think that I did this one in, in grade 11. Again, like study of geometric shapes and then using some imagination while still having the professional skills, using the professional skills of the observation seeing light and shade oh and this one is i think remember i took many many classes to finish this uh, i think i did this in grade 12 very complex a lot of glass vessels metallic this one was a metallic vessel a glass vase a wine bottle and another wine bottle it was very um, just like a um, home background, bricks. And there's a picture behind here and tablecloths, curtains. So this one is, took me a lot of time and effort um, under the guidance of my professor. This one took me at least 10 hours, I think. Um, so the reason why I can draw pretty fast and more accurately and more realistically these days in my art journal is because I could because I did a lot of practice back then yeah lots of practice when I was younger there's no magic recipe there's no um, magic skill that can help you become like powerful artists overnight you do need a lot of practice like years of practice um, it's more helpful if you can find like a teacher that can teach you in real life. And this one again, this one is a watercolor. This one I took again, it took many hours on this under the guidance of my professor after school. Dried corns, bowl, teapot, and a ceramic vessel and a stuff, stuffed donkey. I'll show you a bit more. This one is something I did on my own at home. Still, like I think I remember it took at least three hours painting this small watercolor still life at home on my own. When I was 
in grade 12. Another one, finally, last one is a study of onions and the sweet potato. This one I did with the guidance of my art professor after school in his studio. And again, this one took me again, maybe two or three classes to finish with watercolors. So a lot of practice back then that build up my confidence and skills that, that I'm able to put in my art journal. So before I started my art journals, I've been reading a lot of books on sketching, art journaling, um, and those books give me a lot of inspiration to start my own art journals. And here is a pile of some of them. I'm gonna show you. So this one, The Creative License by Danny Gregory. So this is the very first book I bought on art journaling and Danny is the, is the person who inspired me um, to start my first art journal. His book is very inspiring and he is, he had a sketchbook school right now online, which is very famous. Home decorations, flower pots, like anything can be sketched. Like almost like anything. So inspiring. And then I bought Danny Gregory's book, Everything Matters. It's basically like a, um, a book of his, one of his sketchbooks. He liked to sketch cityscapes, everyday home decorations, ketchup bottles, yogurt bottles. These ones. So this is my early inspirations on art journaling. And then I also bought a book called Mastering Sketching by Judy Martin. So this one features a lot of um, artists with different sketching styles, not necessarily art journaling, but sketching in general. So different artists, many different styles, very diff different art mediums. It could be just pen or colored pencils or mixed media. I really enjoy looking at these different styles in this book and this one is talking about how to see light and shade and how to see a cityscape space a lot of inspirations and, and a lot of um, skills that you can learn from too how do you um, draw patterns and textures to make your your sketch more interesting Very loose watercolors. I really like these. Vacations, sketching on vacations. And I think you can find this on Amazon. And then the next one is An Illustrated Life, again by Danny Gregory. It's like a whole big book of collections of different artists' sketchbooks. Starting with Danny Gregory's own sketchbook, and then there's other famous well-known artists and illustrators, art journals, art notebooks, so many different styles. From illustration to collage to um, more realistic drawing style like Kathy Johnson. I really like Kathy Johnson's watercolors. I think she's a master in watercolors. There we go. And the next one is, I think this one is a very old book by Frederick Frank. This one is called Zen Seeing, Zen Drawing. So basically this book focuses on how to slow down in life and how to see things really with your eyes, with your heart. And I really like his style. It's very loose, it's very meditative too. And he could sketch really fast. I think his sketches has a lot of a uh, special calming spirit in them. Cityscapes in Japan, he traveled to Japan. Okay, I really like his drawings of crowds. Really capture the spirit of a city and humanity. 
Next one, I think this one you can get from um, Amazon. There's a series of five minute sketchings. This one is on architecture by Liz Steele. She's a famous sketcher on social media and te she's teaching a lot of classes online too. She's giving you a lot of tips on seeing simple shapes, how to simplify. She's very good at that. Outline the basic volumes, perspective. Again, you don't have to be perfect when you're sketching. It could be really loose and playful with pen and watercolors. I really like Liz Steele's style too. Like these ones, she did. I think she filled hundreds of sketchbooks, watercolor sketchbooks. She gave us a lot of um, tips and techniques on how to sketch faster and better. This one, again, Urban Watercolor Sketching by Felix Scheinsberg, Scheinsberger. And again, I really like his style too. Very loose and it has a lot of fun spirit in it. The colors he uses is very vibrant. The lines has a lot of life in it. Look at these, I really like this style. I think he's talking about how to use Different colors. This one is the yellow and orange. Red and purple, different color themes. Okay. This one and this one by uh, Claire Walker Leslie. Drawn to nature. So this artist, she likes to do nature journals. And she do very quick and loose and simplistic sketches of everyday weathers, things that she saw on her walk, the colors that she sees throughout the seasons, night skies, nature, leaves, birds, and these. And again, you can, as you can see, these are very simplistic and with a lot of observational notes about nature. So. Very inspiring. So the purpose of keeping an art journal or like or nature journal is just to you know observe life and be a real living human being. I really like her approach in sketching. And again, we don't have to be perfect. The last one, urban sketching by Thomas Thorspecken. A very nice, inspiring sketcher. And let's see. Just introducing tools. Drawing strokes. Values and colors. And just featuring a lot of uh, famous sketchers and artists. Seeing perspective, two point, three point, one point perspectives. This book is more focused on urban sketching, which is quite challenging for a lot of people. So when this pandemic over, I'm, I will be um, going out a lot more and do more urban sketchings. Okay. So just to wrap up, I think if you really want to, if you're really um, serious about improving your art skills, then I think it's a good idea to take some in-person art classes with um, professional art teachers. Um, I think the beginning could be more tedious when you're drawing and observing still lives or like basic three-dimensional shapes, but it really helps you to build up your skills in drawing more complex things like uh, sceneries and landscapes. So if you want to do really good landscape paintings and it's very important that you start from the basics. It's like if you want to learn how to run and how to dance, you need to how to learn how to walk first. So that's very important if you wanted to improve seriously. But if you want to just to sketch more casually, then just go for it. Um, there's no right or wrong in art. Um, yeah, so we all have, we, we do have a lot of freedom in whatever ways we want to create. And 
working in art journals, you don't have to be realistic like me or like other artists or other sketchers. You can you can do cartoons, you can draw in a more uh, minimalistic style. You don't have to be realistic. Um, so for me, I have a more like a re realistic style in art journals, but you don't have to be the same way as me or others. And you can feel free to experiment with different art mediums, um, like pencils, color pencils, oil pastels, and there's a lot of markers, there's a lot of um, art mediums out there these days in the modern world. So we have a lot of new possibilities in creating in art journals. 